So as you're going through that packet, you'll notice there's some problems that are not just combining numbers and, and putting together some symbols with the numbers. There are some that actually you're going to have to combine the symbols. Similar to this. <clears throat> Let's say this is 5x here. This is x, this is 12, and this is equal to 2x. What are you calling this? Just finding missing dimensions with, with variables. Okay, let's say that this here is. 40, we'll call this up here 7y, call this 3y, and I'll call this 6y. If I want to express the height of this, there are two different ways I can do it. I can express it as right here, 5x. How would be the other way I could express it? Perfect x plus 12 plus 2x. The dimension is going down this side here. <coughs> now, I, can, I don't have to leave it like that. I can combine it. Because I know that x and, tw and 2x can be combined. Just like having an inch and 2 inches, that would make 3 inches. x and 2x can combine to make 3x. So I can simplify that to be 3x plus 12. Remember, things, when we add or subtract, we can combine things that have the same name. Since those are both x's, we can combine them. Technically, I can think of this as being a 1x. Now, up here, I want to express the distance from here to here. Now, I know it's 40, but is there another way I can express that distance? Well, I could do this plus this minus that, couldn't I? So that would be 7y plus 6y minus 3y. I can combine those as well. 7y plus 6y would be 13y. Minus 3y would be 10y. Now what, I, what I've done here is actually the start of using algebra and equations, I can actually find all those missing dimensions now. We're not going to get into that at this point. But that is going to be one of our next steps coming up. <coughs> but let's say I have a piece like this. And let's say I am told that all of those holes have a radius of 3y. The center to center spacing between holes is 5x. First thing I want to find, what's the distance between holes here? Well, I know from here to here is the 5x, right? I know that, yeah, here to here is 3y. Here to here is another 3y. So yeah, I would write it as 5x minus 3y minus another 3y. And you're right. I can combine those negative 3y and negative 3y. Now notice, 
I said minus 3y and minus 3y a moment ago. Now I'm saying negative 3y and negative 3y. We're dealing with algebraic numbers. It's interchangeable. 5x minus 3y is the same as 5x and a negative 3y. So negative 3 and negative 3 make negative 6y. So 5x minus 6y is the expression for that length right here. Now, I'm going to throw in another piece of information. The distance from here to the center of the hole is 3x. <coughs> I want to know the distance from this edge of the piece to this side of that hole. Now, I'm assuming all the holes are uniform, all the spacings are uniform. So i got to figure out how to piece this together. So from here to here is 3x. Does the 3y play into that at all? Say no. No, it doesn't. From here to here is the 5x. Does the 3y play into that at all? No. From here to here is going to be what? Another 5x. I didn't draw it very well, but yes, it's 5x. But I still need to get to here. What's this last piece going to be? That's where the 3y comes in, the radius. So I've got 3x plus 5x plus 5x plus 3y. So I need to combine. 3 plus 5 plus 5 makes 13x plus 3y. I can combine the things that have the same names and algebraic numbers just like I can with any other type of number. Like if I had inches and pounds, I can combine all the inches, I can combine all the pounds, but I can't combine them with each other when I'm adding or subtracting. <coughs> so working with these algebraic numbers, on this next step we're going to be looking more at pure algebra, which is not as applicable as what we've been doing with the packet. But it's something I have to show you because we're going to have to do some symbol manipulation for solving equations and systems of equations coming up. So we, we looked at combining, you know, 3x plus 7y minus 8x minus 2y, like that. We've done stuff similar to that. We can combine here the 3x with the negative 8x. Now, again, I made that switch. I just said that was 3x plus 7y minus 8x. Now I'm calling it a negative 8x. That symbol in front of a number is its sign. So even though that is minus 8x, we treat it as a negative 8x when we go to do anything with it. So 3x and negative 8x is negative 5x. 7y and negative 2y make positive 5y. So I can combine to get negative 5x plus 5y. But it's a little more complicated than that. <clears throat> what I just wrote here is an algebraic number. Believe it or not, it is no different from our whole numbers. It just looks very different. But remember when we had something like 584? That was the abbreviation. The full form of that number looks like this. Five hundreds, eight tens, and four ones. In fact, from what we just saw, their scientific notation, we know that's five hundreds, that's five times ten to the second. Eight tens, that's eight times ten to the one, or just eight times ten. And our four ones, that's four times ten to the zero, or just four. When we see it in this form, we see the similarities. This, when I'm writing it out in its long form or full form like this, I'm including the place value with each digit. Same down here. This is There's nothing written here, so that's the ones place. This is the tens, or ten to the ones place. This is the hundreds, or ten squareds place. If I look over here, this is an algebraic number. The place values are no longer powers of tens, they are powers of x. This is the ones place, or the x to the zero. 
This is the x or the x to the one's place. This is the x squared's place. So it works just like our whole numbers, only we have to write out the place values with our algebraic numbers because it doesn't just go by position. <coughs> so if I wanted to add that 3x squared plus 7x oops, plus 2 plus 5x squared plus 8x plus 3. Adding those, now we've all seen different ways of adding these together. Um, most common method that's shown in textbooks is, oh, just drop the parentheses and combine like terms. But we can add these just like we would whole numbers up here. I'm going to write them out. So 3x squared plus 7x plus 2. Then the second number, I'm going to line up with the first. The x squared with the x squared. The x's with the x's. The 1's with the 1's. And I am adding down the columns. What's 2 plus 3? 5. It's positive 5. 7x plus 8x? 15x. 3x squared plus, it, uh, plus 5x squared? 8x squared. Now, we've seen a couple of differences here already with whole numbers. One is, algebraic numbers must always be written out in long form. There is no abbreviation for the algebraic numbers like we do with whole numbers. Second is, with algebraic numbers, we don't have to carry. There is no carrying. 15x, that doesn't carry a 1 over into the x squared digit. There is no carrying at all. The third big difference we're going to see <coughs> in a whole number, every digit of the number is the same sign. If I have negative 239, that is a negative 200s. That is a negative 310s. And is a negative 91s. In an algebraic number, each digit can be positive or negative on its own. I can have 3x squared minus 9x plus 11. So this x digit is negative and the other two are positive. So each digit can be positive or negative on its own in the algebraic numbers. Which does confuse our operations a little bit. Let's look at addition again. So you have 5x squared minus 7x plus 2 plus 3x squared plus 4x minus 11. Again, I'm going to write these out. 5x squared minus 7x plus 2. Now I'm going to make sure I line up the columns. So x squared goes to the x squared. 4x goes under the negative 7x. Negative 11 goes under the 2. And I am still adding my columns. I just have to deal with the negatives. 2 plus negative 11. Negative 9. Negative 7x plus 4x. Negative 3x. 5x squared plus 3x squared. 8x squared. <coughs> Subtraction is where it gets kind of sticky. Just like with addition, I'm going to line them up. And just like with addition, I'm going to go down the columns, but I'm subtracting this time. So the negatives can make this quite a bit more complicated. 3 minus a negative 13. Becomes 3 plus 13 or 16. Positive 16. Negative 8 minus 5. So negative 8. Plus a negative. Yep, plus a negative 5, which is <coughs> negative 13x. 5 minus 7. Negative 2x squared. So we have negative 2x squared minus 13x plus 6. So it's just keeping track of the negatives that's the tough part there. 
It is a plus 16, yeah. No, I might have said plus 6. It's possible. <coughs> so let's see. 8x squared minus 3x minus 9 minus 2x squared minus 5x minus 10. Why don't you try that when you know it? Let's see what you come up with. So, negative 9 minus negative 10, positive 1. 3 minus a negative 5, positive 8x. 8x squared minus 2x squared, 6x squared. Yes. Let's multiply. We looked at some of these before. 7x times 3x. We multiply the counts. 7 times 3 is 21. x times x is x squared. What if we have 4x times 6y? Now, if we were trying to add 4x plus 6y, we wouldn't be able to do it because they have different names. Multiplying, however, we do not need the same name. Perfect. Well, careful. We're going to combine the counts. 4 times 6 is 24. Then we can combine the names. Y, X times Y is XY. Very good. Yeah, if we were adding 4X plus 6Y, the answer would be 4X plus 6Y. We wouldn't be able to do anything with it. <coughs> now, one of the reasons why we did our work with our powers of tens here is... Let's say we have 7x to the 3rd times 5x to the 8th. We're still going to multiply the counts. 7 times 5 is 35. x to the 3rd times x to the 8th. x to the 11. And we can have more than one variable. We can have 8x squared y times 3x to the fifth y to the third. We're going to combine the counts. 8 times 3 is 24. Then we're going to combine each name separately. x squared times x to the fifth, x to the seventh. y times y to the third, y to the fourth. Good. We'll treat that as y to the one. So 1 plus 3 makes 4. So we can multiply what are called monomials, single digit algebraic numbers. This is just a single digit times another single digit. With one count and all of its names for each. <coughs> but we can look at something like this. This is no different than taking like 4 times 72. What would we do here? Well, we would set this up. 72 times 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 7 is 28. Carry the 2, right? Looks familiar, right? We do the exact same thing over here. 3x plus 7 times 5. 5 times 7 is a positive 35. 5 times 3x is 15x. It multiplies out exactly like our whole numbers do. Now, most of us have probably been taught a shortcut called distributing. Sound familiar? When you're multiplying a set of parentheses by a number like that, if I can't combine what's in the parentheses, I distribute the number that's multiplying. Do 5 times 3x is 15x. 5 times 7 is a positive 35. Notice I get the same answer. This is quicker and takes up less space. This is really what is happening. It's a long multiplication. 
Now, we'll end up doing it this way in class quite a bit just because it does save space and it's a little quicker. But if you struggle to do that distributing, you can always come back to this. <coughs> so let's say I have 7x times 5x squared minus 9x plus 3. I'm going to do it out the long way first. 5x squared minus 9x plus 3 times 7x. Notice when I'm multiplying, I don't have to line up place values or anything like that. 7x times positive 3. Positive 21x. 7x times negative 9x. Negative 63x squared. 7x times positive 5x squared. 35x to the third. Very good. 7 times 5 is 35. x times x squared is x to the third. <coughs> Does that process make sense to everybody? Because 7 times negative 9 is negative 63. x times x is x squared. Now, again, the way most of you have probably seen it, if you did it before, was like this. 7x times 5x squared is 35x to the third. 7x times negative 9 is negative 6, or negative 9x is negative 63. x times x is x squared. And 7x times positive 3 is a positive 21x. We get the same answer, and like I said, this is shorter, but this is really what's happening. Is there anybody that would rather do it the long way than do it the short way? Okay. Most of the time in class, we're going to end up doing it the short way just because it saves space. <coughs> what if we have two two-digit numbers? Well, again, this is no different than having something like thirty-four times twenty-three. If I set this up, I have to do three times four and then three times three, right? Then I gotta move over a spot, do two times four and two times three. It's the exact same process. I set it up. I'm going to do negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Negative 2 times 3x, negative 6x. Now I'm taught to either put in a 0 or leave a space here. 5x times 5, positive 25x. 5x times 3x, 15x squared. Combine down through here, negative 10 and 0, make negative 10. Negative 6x and 25x, so positive 19x, and have the 15x squared. So it's just long multiplication, just like with our whole numbers. <coughs> Many of you were probably taught something called FOIL. Sound familiar? FOIL is just an acronym that allows you to do this without having to write it out. F stands for first. You multiply the first digit in each number. 3x times 5x is 15x squared. O stands for outside. You multiply the outside digits. 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x. I stands for the inside digits. 5 times 5x is a positive 25x. And L stands for the last digits. 5 times negative 5 is a negative 10. So you can combine there. You've got the 15x squared. You can combine the negative 6x and the positive 25x. Make a positive 19x and the negative 10. Notice it's the same answer. 
This way is shorter, but this is really the way the actual way of doing it. I'm not a huge fan of foil. Just because foil only works for those problems like that. What if I have 7x plus 3 times 5x squared minus 8x plus 2? Foil doesn't work anymore, does it? There's a middle digit here. It becomes flame oil. <coughs> Actually, I have no clue what it would be, but it sounds fun. But multiplying it out the long way still works. I always put the digit with the number with the most digits on top. Now, of course, you know how to adjust FOIL to just multiply it out, too, if you need to. And we are multiplying. 3 times 2. Positive 6. 3 times negative 8x. Negative 24x. 3 times 5x squared. 15x squared. Now we leave a space or put in a 0 here. 7x times 2. Positive 14x. 7x times negative 8x. Negative 56x squared. 7x times 5x squared. 35x to the third. 6 and 0 make 6. Negative 24 and negative 14 make a negative 10x. 15x squared, negative 56 make a negative 41x squared. 35x to the third. What do you think? Better and sharp sticking you? So far? <coughs> when we divide, same rules apply. So we combine the counts. What is 18 divided by 6? 3 x to the fifth divided by x squared. When we're dividing powers, we subtract the exponents, subtract the powers. So x to the third. We can have multiple variables. So we have 36 x to the eighth y to the third divided by 4 x to the fifth y. 36 divided by 4 is 9. x to the 8th divided by x to the 5th. x to the 3rd. 8 minus 5 is 3. Subtract the powers. I think this is y to the 1. y to the 3rd divided by y is y squared. 3 minus 1 is 2. If I have a number like 846 divided by 2. I start at the front of the number and I just divide each digit. 2 goes into 8 four times, there's nothing left over. 2 goes into 4 twice, there's nothing left over. 2 goes into 6 three times, and there's nothing left over. I can go each digit divided by the 2, as long as there's no remainders. So with algebraic numbers, we can do a similar thing. Forty two x to the fifth minus twenty eight x to the third plus thirty five x squared divided by seven x. And divide that first digit by the seven x. Divide the numbers. Forty two divided by seven? Six. X squared divided by x or x to the fifth divided by x? X to the fourth. Negative 28x to the third divided by 7x. Negative 28 divided by 7. Negative 4. x to the third divided by x. x squared. 35x squared divided by 7x. 35 divided by 7. Positive 5. And x squared divided by x. x. What do you think? Not horrible? Okay, well... This is going to be in the big book, page 233, exercise 13-2.
page 335 through 336. Exercise 13-3. Page 339, exercise 13-4, and page 342 through 343. Exercise 13-4. <coughs> I'll give you the last 17 minutes or so to work on those and work on those packets if you prefer. Yep. That one? Yeah, go down. 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 Yeah. All right, good. Good?